This is amazing. It doesn't feel like we're in the Bahamas, does it? Last week after saying goodbye to our fantastic hosts, we sailed over to Marsh Harbour. We stocked up the boat for the first time in forever and headed off on a new adventure northwest to Manjack Key. There's actually a reef up here that I'd like to go and spearfish. Oh my god, not even joking. First dive down, that was the first dive and he has a hog fish. Can you get that off? Uh, the wind's just blowing 20 knots. We've got full sails up, well, directly on course and nearly dead downwind. We've been going at the same speed as this squall for the last almost hour. We've been keeping up with it. And it's only 12 knots all around, but this is bringing us 15, then 18, now 20. So it's like, I've been trying to hang around it just on the outside and it's glorious. Oh, that's glorious. <laughs> Probably having a pretty sweet time out there steering. And I'm still trying to move into the house. I feel like it takes a good few days to have everything back in its place once you've been off the boat. We're mostly busy during the day doing other things, whether it be provisioning or um, catching up on a bit of work or something like that, so yeah, that seems to not be a priority of ours So we usually always do this whenever we move back on board. It takes days and days. Stuff's just kind of everywhere You gotta keep building up, building up our love You gotta keep building up, building up our love Gust has gone. It has. It has, yeah. Or maybe not. Yeah, well, it's going to come again. I should have done this before, obviously. No big deal. Well, we can't sleep, so we're watching a movie. And Riley's making me make him some Vegemite toast. Don't point that camera over here. Midnight snacking. Riles is still on the nerd and we're dodging lightning left, right and centre. And I'm actually really scared. Some of these lightning strikes are really big and close and the thunder's really loud. And the baby's going crazy. It's so weird. The baby knows. It has not stopped raining since last night. It was quite a, an adventurous night. We had a lot of squalls with strong wind come. But somehow we both managed to sleep through it. I guess like, yeah, just having the anchor dug so well, we knew we weren't gonna move because um, we'd experienced some strong wind before we went to bed. And um, we felt pretty, yeah, good about everything. But it looks like it's gonna rain all day today. <laughs> good morning, my dear. How's it going? How was your night? Oh, it was all right. A bit sleepless. I think there was one fierce blow that would have been 40 knots. It was Howling unbelievably forceful. It only lasted for 10 seconds and it just came absolutely out of nowhere. Fortunately, I wasn't too concerned at all. We're in a three metres of water. 
with 40 metres of chain out, plus the bridle. So we're never, ever going to drag anywhere. And I saw it. You need a coffee, don't you? I do. Excuse me. And I saw, the, I saw the anchor land in sand and we, we stuck really, really well and there's enough room all around us and we're the only boat in the anchorage. So I wasn't concerned at all, which is a great feeling because if there is any doubt in your mind, you don't go back to sleep, you like. <laughs> So if you know if you know your anchor's set well, you can buy yourself eight hours of sleep. For sure. Elena asked me to talk to the camera and to say what we're doing today, but we're not going to do anything because it's raining. <laughs> Clean up. It's a just us bit. two again. It's good though. I oh. love having guests, but I also love just lazing around and. Guests guests break it up, which yeah. is really good. Alona and I are on our best behaviour when we got guests on board. We're good at pretending that we're nice people <laughs> for a limited amount of time, but that facade can only be kept up for so long before we're back to being horrible. Yeah. We like to just sit around and drink hot chocolates and... Naked. Not do anything. We're supposed to take the um, leftover fish and go and feed the stingrays in the corner here. Mm. Which I guess we better do. Yeah, that'll be really cool. That would be something that we would take the baby to the go and do. We should put some wet weather gear on and go for a walk in that forest there. It looks a bit Harry Potter-ish, doesn't it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> This is amazing. This is so cool. It doesn't feel like we're in the Bahamas, does it? It feels like I'm in Canada. I'm feeling. And the, the bear's about to drop on me at any moment. Or New Zealand, yeah. Certainly not the Bahamas. The old house I thought was best left Mushroom. <laughs> what do you call them? How frozen is it? Just look frozen. <clears throat> Do it quickly. Oh. This is really stuck. Oh. <laughs> Just whip them out fast. That's what I. Oh, that's it. Fast. Fast. Ah! All right, all gone. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I just stepped on the biggest thing of prickles. So, anyway, Riley's going to fill up the fish and he's going to cut up the head of the fish and probably the tail and we're going to feed it to the stingrays and the sharks. And I've already seen a few stingrays. We haven't even put out any food yet, so I know we're here. Probably from all my noise. Falling like a rock deep into your ocean. Now I'm frozen. Will I ever thaw out? I lost myself deep inside your forest. Now I'm Fry's just eating it. It's incredible to see. But they really like puff up. Oh, hey, be careful. <laughs>
careful, Bertrand. Just give him the fish. Give him the fish. He wants it. I'm not giving in. It's getting bullied by. <laughs> Why? Yeah, mate. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I need a, I need oh a bucket. Wow. What? Oh my gosh. Oh man, that was hard. <laughs> Pretty epic fight down there as well. Tell me about the fight. Oh, it was just, they're all in a old tire, which you can't even tell, it's been down there for a thousand years. I got one pretty quickly, and then one would try and go out and I'd go down and he'd swim back to the hole. But anyway, once I had two in my hands, and then I saw a third one, which was another, you know, not big, but, edible whereas there were smaller ones in there that I'd grab and, and then put back. I just went to check on the anchor and I saw that old tyre and I was like, Elena, can you throw us some gloves? Very nice. Stop apologising. No, 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 no. We're good. We're at radio, but I haven't made the bed or anything. A rented catamaran pulled up right next to us, and it actually had two patrons of ours on board. So we decided to invite them over to check out La Vagabond, which got me thinking. First of all, I should really thank all of our patrons over the years. You guys are the salt in our blood. You're the wind in our sails. We really love you guys, I can't thank you enough. Elena spends hundreds, if not thousands of hours editing. Life on the water isn't particularly easy and um, we really appreciate all of the support that you've given us over the years. And I encourage other people, if you're thinking about doing it, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. So I'm constantly trying to think of more ways that we can give back to people and I thought this was a pretty cool idea. Usually when we meet a patron, we'll be like, oh, come on board for a boat tour anyway. This sort of makes it a little bit more official. It's for the $25 and above, which is a significant sort of input. So I'm like, you know, we really want to be saying thank you to these people. If serendipity guides you our way, please produce this card for a free boat tour. And it's a great way for Elena and I to meet you, to say thank you. So that's an idea of mine that I thought would be quite cool. If you had already been supporting us, these should already be on their way out to you. If you think that that might be something that you're interested in, then please head over to the website. I would encourage you to do so. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, on with the show. That afternoon, we all went to shore to have some sundowners with our friends. We no longer had the anchorage to ourselves, but it was really nice to have some company. We found a place among those five towns along the coast where colours came to life on the road. So many faces. So we're leaving, you guys. We're on the move. Had a really great time back there at Manjack Key. We only stayed a few nights, but um, we met some good people on the boats next door. And we had a sundown session on the beach with them. And also, um, Bruce and Brenda, who are patrons of ours, they hired out a boat and they've been cruising around the Bahamas, so we were lucky enough to get to meet them. Um, lovely humans. So we're on our way to Turtle Key, um, but we're gonna anchor in New Plymouth, which makes me laugh, uh, because for those of you who've been watching from the beginning, when we first went to Antigua, on the old boat, um, we referred to Plymouth Harbour as Plymouth Harbour, I think. People correct us on place names. Yeah. We're in a different place all the time. Yeah, we're, we're always getting a name of a, of a town or a city wrong. So we're going to New Plymouth. And uh, so it's an old settlement there, so we're going to have a walk through the town and see what that's like. Um, apparently it's really beautiful, there's a few museums. Not that I'm particularly into museums, but Riley is, so maybe we'll maybe we'll go inside one. Have a look. Sounds yeah, good.
In the next episode, we explore Settlement Harbour, so be sure to tune back in. New Plymouth. This is a huge lobster. Another hot tip, if you hit the notifications bell next to the subscribe button under this video, you won't miss another episode of ours. Okay, bye.